Hi, everybody. Welcome to Vascopedia Views and uh, to an amazing Vascopedia Shock Week. Uh, three episodes with live cases, challenging discussions, and important technical tips and tricks about the use of shockwave in large vessels. In CLTI patients, uh, finally, an episode about the use of shockwave uh, in, uh, during TVAR or TAVI and how shockwave facilitates the delivery on the, of the endograph will take place during this week. Today, it is the first episode about large vessels, and we mean CFA and ILIAC vessels. And I have the honor to moderate uh, a unique, uh, let's say, episode uh, with having three key opinion leaders uh, together with me. So let me introduce um, our key opinion leaders, starting with Dr. Elias Nori. He's the head of intervention and angiology at Bad Kreuzingen in Germany. Uh, Dr. Nori will perform a live and a very interesting live case step by step with a shockwave in the iliac arteries from his center in Germany. We're going to uh, connect with him in a few minutes and during the live case and afterwards we're going to discuss all the indications, important technical aspects uh, of the of the shockwave uh, technology in the iliac arteries and the SFA with the uh, two renowned guests, uh, Dr. Frank Arco, vascular surgeon and director of the St. Gerhard yeah. Vascular Institute at Charlotte, North Carolina and the United States, and uh, Professor Rafael Koskas, uh, vascular surgeon at Abruaz Paris Hospital in Paris, France. Ladies gentlemen, welcome to Vascopedia uh, Shock Week, and thank you for accepting the invitation. Moreover, I would like to uh, thank our Shockwave company for sponsoring all the uh, episodes and supporting the Vascopedia activities. Here is a 76 years old male patient with a peripheral arterial um, obstructive disease, according to Rutherford Tree on the left side, with a typical calf claudication ratio with a walking capacity of 150 to 200 meters. He was already treated um, just a few weeks ago in the right um, common iliac and external iliac artery, as well as in the common femoral artery. But also he was treated six years ago with a stent angioplasty of the left common and uh, iliac artery, um, but also in the SFA. He has also a coronary artery disease um, that was performed a, a PCI with drug eluding stent of the right coronary artery in January of this year. Um, so he has also atrial fibrillation, which requires a, a, a pixaban, um, which is uh, interrupted um, uh, from yesterday. And his risk factors are former nicotine abuse, hyperlipoproteinemia, and um, atrial hypertension. So the non-invasive examination showed at the right side an ABI of 0 0.8 and the left side uh, 0 0.4. And the duplex scan showed, as you can see, a peak systolic velocity of the common femoral artery, uh, more than four meters per second. The um, um, SFA, but also Profunda, are patent, but the distal part of SFA is a second stenosis or subtotal occlusion. A CT scan, can you see it now? So there is a lot of yeah. calcium of the left CFA. And the next slide shows now the angiography of the left femoropopliteal artery. Um, you can see a lot of calcium in the CFA. There is a high-grade stenosis, a subtotal occlusion, and next the slide. distal part of A. Yes, perfect. Also. We can see now. OK, a high-grade stenosis. So next slide, please. The treatment strategy. So my treatment strategy is um, I have uh, already placed a seven French crossover sheets from the right CFA to the left CFA. I will take a 035 or, or 14 inch guiding wire. If necessary, maybe I would uh, make a pre-dilatation. And the next step is to make a vessel preparation with a shockwave uh, lithotripsy followed by DCB. If there is a residual stenosis, so I will cover this with a lesion, but we will see it in the end of this procedure. Next slide, please. Oh, we can switch now 
to the live screen. Is there as first any comments or any questions? Elias, let's see what the people have voted uh, for these cases because we have asked them if they're going to do an open or an end or repair. Uh, please okay. let's see the results of the first question. Um, and then we're going to see uh, the second one, what would they uh, have done uh, as a primary uh, treatment in case of end or repair. So please uh, give us okay. uh, the results. So uh, until then, um, Rafael, you have also, uh, ah, here we have the first results. So 67%, they would use an end or repair. So either we have a lot of intervention radiologists and angiologists here, or we are missing something because um, uh, actually as a vascular surgeon, I would have say 67% uh, open surgery. Frank, um, do you think that uh, we're gonna have now, we have convinced all the, the results and the evidence regarding IVL and other technologies have convinced the majority of the people to start uh, for an end or first repair in CFA? Uh, I don't know that we have the data yet to sort of support that. Uh, I, I do find myself using a little bit more of an endo approach for the common femoral uh, artery and the endarterectomy. This fella is, you know, he's got a lot of comorbidities. Uh, he's uh, elderly. Uh, I don't think it's unreasonable. He's got pretty good runoff. Um, you know, the thing I, I think we miss a little bit is what's the long-term durability going to be with this repair. I, I think intra-procedural complications, there's a lot of concern that the profunda gets shut off or there's a lot of embolization in these cases. It uh, certainly hasn't come to fruition uh, with the cases that I've done. Um, but you know, the common femoral endarterectomy, from my standpoint, is an operation that is sort of associated with a lot of, uh, the operation's not difficult, but the recovery from it I think if we're honest, is not the easiest operation to recover from. It's an area that's got a lot of movement. Uh, it's not the cleanest area. And I think there's a real significant risk of wound infections or slow healing uh, that really affect an elderly individual's quality of life. Perfect. Let's see the second question before we have Elias starting with his case. So we see 50% we're gonna use a therectomy. Oh my God and 25% IVL. So the question is for you, uh, Rafael, and then for you, Elias. Uh, first of all, uh, Rafael, um, what, how do you explain this result? Do we have more evidence about a therectomy than IVL? I don't think we have uh, a lot of evidence uh, about a therectomy, especially in this location, but, uh, and, and especially in comparative study, we, we have some kind of studies, as you know, but uh, uh, not enough to, to, to say that it's the, 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 the first line approach. Uh, I would not go for a therectomy because here we have a profunda that is patent and also SFA that is patent. So it's complicated to know where should we put the filter and, and, and all these questions. Uh, so I would prefer IVL because there is very little uh, embolization with IVL and, uh, and it's a CFA lesion not extended to, to bifurcation. So it's quite a straightforward case, in fact, with a, a single balloon. Perfect. Let's go back now to Elias. Elias, you have now a big challenge not only to open the vessel, but to convince around, let's say, 75% of the people that IVL is the best treatment strategy. So please convince us. Oh, perfect. So as you can see, this is the first angiography, just the native without contrast media. There is a, a lot of calcium in the CFA, in the external iliac artery, but also in the SFA in Profunda. And the angiography showed what we already see. There is a high-grade stenosis of the CFA, and there is a patent bifurcation. And that means um, that's a very nice and good option for IVL. Um, it is uh, also an option to make an atherectomy, but in my opinion is in this case, it is as first a heavy calcification, uh, it has a heavy calcified lesion. It's a relatively a big vessel. And um, of course we need a, a, a protection device and um, as already mentioned um, by Professor um, Koskas, uh, the rate of embolization uh, for this kind of lesions after a is very high. 
That means so we have to use a protection device. Until you prepare but, it, yeah. exactly to summarize again the advantages of the new M5 Plus. So you're talking that we have a quicker six cycle time, so it is faster than okay. the normal one. We have compatibility uh, to 6F uh, friends for the 6.5 and 7 millimeter. Only the 8 millimeter should go through 7 friends. Uh, and it is uh, actually, um, we have now a broad and access option because we have a length of 135 centimeter of the shaft. Is that right? Exactly. That's correct. Perfect. Are you trying to use this same balloon for the common femoral? Is that why you're not maybe using all the cycles down below? Is that a cost issue? Because there's really no, you know, there's no contraindication to using more shocks in that SFA lesion. Yes, we know so that's a riddle. Also, the the, um, the problems in Germany, there is uh, we don't have a reimbursement for the shockwave. And um, in this case, I would take the same balloon catheter also for CFA, as you can see now. So I'm. So that's also the the reason to try to give some uh, or or treat the, all the lesions with the same balloon. Um, but at the moment, we don't have uh, a reimbursement, so hopefully. We would um, have this in uh, maybe one, two or two years. Yeah. So if you just had that one lesion down the SFA, you would have probably used more pulses down there. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. That's correct. And as you can see now, so in the femoral artery is the balloon completely open. So that means there was not really, a, or the distal calcium was uh, really much higher. But in Elias. this position. Well, I and must the say that the IVL of the common femoral artery really looks uh, quite good so far. Yeah. Okay. I give you a light. So. Frank, uh, in case that you uh, need to use in the U.S. the shockwave um, and you have a concomitant lesion in the deep femoral artery, so what are you doing with the size of the vessel? How are you working? Are you working with the same balloon or using two balloons? Well, I mean, you know, we probably don't have the same constraints as they have in Germany, but we, we do try to still remain uh, cost conscious. So if we can get by with one balloon, we certainly will. Uh, but there are times where I certainly have used uh, two uh, balloons in a, in a case. And, you know, you're probably better off doing that rather than creating a complication, which is associated with probably uh, many more costs than just opening another balloon personally. Raphael, what are you doing in France? I know you have the same problem like in Germany. Yeah, we, we generally use the same balloon and, and it can be the same balloon that is in the CFA with the distal part in the in the PFA uh, since it's low pressure I don't think it's a it's a huge problem we can have an eight millimeter in the uh, balloon in the five millimeter profunda we just inflate it at two three atmosphere and and then we don't uh, damage the, the, the profunda that way very nice result Elias what do you think yes you think? it looks it looks really very nice this is a bit of two consumers of mine I give you a second Objective, uh, oblique. Nee, das da. Yes, du, ich habe keinen Kontrollmittel. Very important. Very important. Nein, das ist zugemacht. So, jetzt. Jetzt. So, second oblique. Okay. Wow, so, there is no good. dissection. It's a nice result. So I would I would take now a seven millimeter balloon and um, make a second pre, um, vessel prep just with a pre dilatation just to check how is the compliance of the vessel after shockwave you know just to be sure. Now this is the DCB or what is this now? 
this is now this is now a DCB for the common femoral artery. And then so I the would sizing is now one to one with the shock wave. Is that right? Yes, this is a eight millimeter, eight by sixty uh, impact balloon catheter. And I will leave it for three minutes. Elias, uh, you have a, a huge experience with this stuff. The question is, did you have any uh, case where you were subintimal uh, during the recanalization of the CFA? And what are you doing in this case? So um, I already use uh, for heavy calcification also um, shockwave. And in my opinion, it works. It works um, uh, very well. And I observe that the um, compliance of the vessel is much better. So uh, just for example, um, for, um, for cases with Supera, I already done a lot of cases, vessel prep with shockwave, also for sub-intimal recanalization, and then um, covered deletion with the Supera with a nice expansion of the Supera stent, you know. Frank, same opinion? Yeah, uh, I agree. I, I think his uh, thought processes are, are sort of spot on. Uh, I do try to avoid Open stenting the, uh, the common femoral, though, if I can. So I give you now uh, Angio for CFA. Let's see if we can convince now the 75% of the people that they have voted against IBL. Very nice. So there is some calcium, but there is not, there is no uh, residual stenosis or something. Of course, there is some calcium, but the that result is, is Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Frank, are you happy with the result, Frank? I am happy. He's got good flow. He's got good filling of the profunda. He's got rapid washout of the uh, contrast. So I, I would probably be done here. It lag and shaft Pacific okay. impact. This is now the CFA just uh, 10 or 15 minutes later. There is no recoil, you know. So that was uh, just treated by IVL followed by DCB with a nice result. And also some later, a uh, second oblique of the SFA with a nice result without a stand. And as you can see, the reconstitution of the below the knee arteries is now much better, much faster. And also refilling of the um, distal part of the below the knee arteries, plantar arch or dorsalis pedis, it's much better, much higher, much faster. So um, I would say that's a, a nice result without a stent angioplasty. So that uh, was uh, my uh, intended uh, um, treatment um, to avoid a stent angioplasty, maybe at the distal part of SFA or proximal part of a uh, popliteal artery, which is a landing zone for a femoral popliteal bypass. And um, I'm happy with this result. What do you think? Elias, Elias, I have to say, this is the definition of vessel preparation. Wherever you look in the literature, what means vessel preparation, it means lumen gain, and it, lum it means improvement of the compliance of the vessel in order to have better uptake of the, uh, of the paclitaxel or of any, of any drug. So really respect is an amazing, amazing result. Thank you for this. Frank, no, are you happy? Yeah, I think a very nice result. Um, I think there's going to be a lot more flow getting down to the foot. Uh, I think, you know, I, I didn't see the patient pre, pre procedure, but I suspect that the claudication that they have uh, is going to be markedly improved. And you can continue to watch that uh, popliteal occlusion. Yes. Uh, yes, makes sense to you because this is a question from uh, Dr. Uh, Patrone. Uh, it is make, does it make sense to make a duplex in the common femoral artery? I mean, not now, but if you're doing it during the operation to see the change of the monophasic or biphasic to a triphasic uh, flow? 
Sometimes, sometimes we do that, uh, but not usually in every case. But uh, of course, yes, it's a very nice option just to check and uh, um, see a um, change of the flow from mono to biphasic, of course, yeah. Guys, unfortunately, we are at the end of the session. Uh, actually, we could talk together uh, hours and hours about all the nice advantages of uh, the uh, Shockwave and especially the new device with an eight millimeter uh, uh, diameter. So we have seen a very nice uh, presentation of the device live from uh, Dr. Nori from uh, Bad Protzingen, where you have seen how it works in the CFA. And also, sometimes you need an additional work uh, in a very eccentric uh, lesions. I really like that he highlighted that shockwave is not only for lumen gate, but also for changing the compliance of the vessel. So, uh, Rafael, uh, the last word for you. Um, do you think that we have a game changer or we, it is the gold standard now in the calcified vessels? I would say yes, and especially in these very short, very high calcium load lesions uh, as the one that were shown here. So yes, we have something that changed the practice here and, and actually in our center it's now first line uh, preparation tool for very calcified lesions. Perfect. So guys, Frank, thank you really very much. Our best regards to the US. Uh, you are on green, that means you are still in working there. Uh, enjoy your day there. Raphael, thank you very much. Best regard to Paris. Thank you. Uh, ladies and thank you very much. Elias, you are a great operator again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye